So glad you can join me for the hour today, and I think we have an interesting program for you. We're going to quickly cover quite a few topics. My guest is the familiar voice of Pastor Billy Crone, good friend of the ministry, and he is also our speaker at the forthcoming Understanding the Times evening, Thursday, October 6th, here in Minneapolis. And we live stream this to the world, and we'll say more about that in just a moment. In studio with me is Pastor Mark Henry, co-host of these bi-monthly events. And he and I started the Every Other Month mini-conferences summer of 2021. He pastors Revived Church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, suburb of Minneapolis, which is the host venue for these events. You heard on that opening clip we played, that was Jared Kushner saying, well, doesn't get any stranger, folks. He hopes his generation would be the first to live forever, to never die. Well, you talk about strong delusions. So some of us are very glad he is not in our nation's capital these days. He is going to never die, he hopes. If you have Jesus Christ as your Savior, indeed, you will live forever in eternity with the King of Kings. But that's not what he has in mind. I think we'll play that clip of him. Now, let me just clarify. It opens with Elon Musk first talking about he wants to reverse aging, etc. And then we have Yuval Harari. We'll say more about him later. And he's going to make a few comments that we have reached the point where we can hack human beings and other organisms. And then Jared Kushner comes out and says he may be the first generation that will live forever. I think there's going to be a lot of breakthroughs on the medical front, uh, particularly around the synthetic uh, mRNA. Uh, you can basically do anything with uh, synthetic uh, RNA, DNA. Um, it's, really, it's like a computer program. So, I mean, I think with enough, with, with, uh, with effort, that's not too crazy. You could probably stop aging, reverse it if you want. Um, uh, these are, you can basically do anything. You can turn someone into a freaking butterfly if you want with the right DNA sequence. I want to talk to you today about the future of our species and really the future of life. It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. From uh, you know, the last year, the one thing I've tried to put a priority on since I left the White House was you know, getting some exercise in. I think that there's a a good probability that my generation is hopefully with the advances in science, either, you know, the, the, the first generation to live forever or the last generation that's going to die. Let's talk about some of these things. Billy Crone, welcome back to Understanding the Times Radio. Thanks, Jan. It's always great to be on. Pastor Mark Henry, thank you for coming in studio. Good to be with you, Jan. Good to be with you as well, Billy. I'm going to go back and forth with you two gentlemen. Billy, let me just throw this to you. Help us understand this astounding statement by Jared Kushner that he may be the first generation to never die. And then Elon Musk saying we're going to reverse aging. Yuval Harari, anything he utters is usually a God-hating type of a statement, but give me your thoughts. It's under the heading of the title. These guys that you just mentioned, whether people realize it or not, are what's called transhumanists. Transhumanists is basically the belief system that we need to use science and technology to transcend what they call human limitations. As elites, they want to bring in what they call the three supers. First, they have super longevity, meaning you don't need God, you don't need Jesus. With science and technology, we could live forever. And that's what they're saying with their statements, both Musk and also with Jared Kushner there. But even with Harari, he pictures that you may not even be a human anymore by the time we're done. And that's what this technology is going to do. But the other one, it's not just super longevity, it's super health, where they picture a world of utopia with science and technology and genetic manipulation. We'll be able to get rid of all diseases. And then the third super is called super intelligence. And I kid you not, Jan, what they forecast is with technology, they can improve human intelligence. In the 140s, a person is considered right now a genius. They want to crank it up to on the order of a thousand. But I like to remind people that sounds, quote, super, these three supers. But do you think that you and I, the average Joe, will be given super longevity and super health and super intelligence? No, it's for these global elites. And this is the man-made false, dare I say, satanic utopia that these guys are bringing to the planet. All it is, Jan, 
is a rehash of the live Satan that he used on Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Genesis 3 said, Satan to Eve, he said, you will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So that's all that Satan has done. He has brought forth this lie called transhumanism. You don't need God. You don't need Jesus. Listen to Satan. You won't die. With this science and technology, you guys will have superpowers. In fact, I have these same guys on tape, Jan. They don't just say that they're going to live forever and have super intelligence and health. They literally say, and I quote, we will be gods. Yes. And if you get in our way, we will kill you. I'm throwing it now to your court, Mark Henry, because there's been an executive order, and the three of us have talked about it. The executive order was actually September 12th. Ties into what we're talking about, folks. From our president, well, he's very good at signing executive orders. I don't know if he knows what he's signing, but nonetheless, this is an executive order quietly getting Biden's signature on the document, executive order on advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing, innovation for a sustainable, safe, and secure American bioeconomy. That's gobbledygook to a lot of folks. It's hard for anybody who's not a scientist to wrap their brain around some of these things that we're talking about. And you actually have it printed out in front of you, Mark. Give me your thoughts on, first of all, what Billy has just said. But again, here we've got another insane executive order, very lengthy and very scary. Yeah, it's 47 pages long, Jan, and it's the executive order to accomplish exactly what we heard in that tape, which Billy just described to mm -hmm. us. For example, under section one, it specifically says, this is the policy of my administration to coordinate a whole of government approach to advancing biotechnology and biomanufacturing. So this interfacing of cutting into cells, human genome, implants of material changing us, Harari said it really good. They want to make something that's no longer a human. This is creating of zombies. If you think about it from a historical okay. standpoint, if Hitler had this technology, he would have really been happy. But as you read down through, again, the 47 pages, and it's complex, but it basically says that the United States is going to take direct national approach and on page three, I'm reading, it says, we need to develop genetic engineering technologies and techniques to be able to write circuitry for cells and predictable programs of biology in the same way in which we write software and programs for computers. So this is going to unlock the cell, the whole DNA. And actually, you read down through the document, it's looking at the whole structure, the three-dimensional structure of your DNA. How do we hack that? How do we manipulate that so we have people with a certain IQ, accomplishing certain things, feeling a certain way, thinking a certain way, functioning in a certain way. This is terrifying. This is demonic. In the article I have in front of me, it says, Biden's September 12, 2022 executive order declares that Americans must surrender all human rights that stand in the way of transhumanism. Clinical trial safety standards and informed consent will be eradicated as they stand in the way of universally unleashing gene editing technologies needed to, get this now, merge humans with artificial intelligence. Pastor Billy Crone, and you have produced DVD and teaching one after another on AI. Help us make sense of what I just read. We can't stand in the way of universally unleashing gene editing technologies needed to merge humans with AI. Help us understand. AI is the linchpin. It's the technology that enables these guys to pull off their satanic vision for humanity. They can call it the Great Reset all they want, mm -hmm. which, by the way, is not just an economic reset. It's a human reset. They can call it the Fourth Industrial Revolution. All it is is what God warned about called the Antichrist Kingdom, the seven-year tribulation. I'm convinced. AI allows them to do what they envision. It's two sides of one coin. The first side, what they envision for the planet, is what's called the Internet of Things. And the Internet of Things will give them the ability, if they can microchip the planet, which is what they're doing, that's everything, including people, then they will have the ability to know everything you do, everything you buy and sell. Sound familiar? Every place you go, whoever you talk to, your conversations, it's all tied into what they call smart cities, smart utopias. All it is is just a giant global big brother system that is being micromanaged around the whole planet. Now, here's the problem, and here's the importance of AI. Wait a second. So we have the satellites to micromanage the planet. We have the microchips. We have the computers. But think about 
literally micromanaging everybody's proximity, all their conversations, what they're doing, what they're buying, what they're selling. You can't hire enough humans to run that system, but AI can. AI allows them to finally pull it all together. But see, that's just the first half of the coin jam. The other thing that people need to realize is, again, it's not just the Internet of Things. That's the one side of the coin, bringing in the Great Reset and this Big Brother system and cashless society and monitoring everything we do, including our purchases. It's what they call the Internet of Bodies, IOB, as in boy. They literally now want to microchip you, and part of the microchips, and this is their words, including Klaus Schwab, could be a brain chip and or electronic platform they get inside your body one way or another. This will allow them to connect your body to the internet, the inside of you. And they pitch it like it's going to be a great thing for us that, hey, wouldn't you like to know that you're getting sick before you get sick? And then we could send out an electronic signal and we could genetically give instructions for your body to repair. And wouldn't that be fantastic? But here's the other aspect. And they admit that this will give them the same ability. Once they get inside your body with this internet of bodies, the IOB, then they will be able to not just give you genetic modifications on the fly, but they will be able to access your thoughts. They will be able to access your memories. They will be able to insert thoughts. They will be able to delete memories. This is the draconian thing that they're implementing, and Biden's executive order unleashes this second half, this internet of bodies, to where you can't say nothing because they're the elites after all. They know right. better. They're going to bring this utopia to the planet, whether you want it or not. Let's clarify again. We have new listeners, and they may not be aware of some of the terms we're using, but Klaus Schwab heads this World Economic Forum, came together back in 1971. Here's a short clip of him where he's going to say, and it's hard to understand, folks, thick accent. He's a German. He's going to say here, in 10 years, we have a brain implant, and everyone will have them. Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains, and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can, and we measure your, your brain waves, and I can immediately tell you how the people react, or I can feel uh, how the people react um, to your answers. Uh, is it imaginable? Um, I, I think that is imaginable. I think um, I, I think you know you can imagine that you can imagine well you're going to be sort of transplanted into you know the the internet Ritual. so to speak to live forever in a digital realm. Uh, you know you can imagine that you know you just in your biological incarnation are going to live to be some you know very long age. Mark Henry, you want to weigh into this? Jan, as I listen to that clip, the reality is, is you and I are probably viewed as crazy, insane people for thinking this is a possibility. But remember this, the Manhattan Project is when the government intentionally used the full force of our nation to develop the technology required for atomic weapons. That's exactly what this executive order is. It's not just a fairy tale. No, no, no. We have this technology. Now we're going to develop in the fullest measure. Now we're going to implement. And if you read down through it, there's timelines. In 100 days, this has to happen. Sure. 180 days, six months. According to this order, the president's demanding these things have to be in place on this timeline. And I just want to say this. How is this thing going to be implemented? I am very concerned about the U.S. military because, as we have seen in recent days, our elitists today believe that the U.S. military is for them to use as they see fit. Very and I am true. very scared what's going to happen, Jan. And I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I'm afraid as this starts to unfold, the government's going to say, well, we're going to start here with our own military and our own government employees, and we'll work this out, just as we've seen in recent days. Well, we've got the head one-worlder, Mr. Schwab, saying everyone, everyone is going to have a chip in their brain. This is likely the tribulation. The church likely won't see that. We don't know that for sure. So we're talking some very apocalyptic things here when we've got a brain implant for every human being. From my perspective, as I think about these things, this is a radical transformation of yeah. humanity as we know it. Right. They acknowledge that. In fact, they are gloating in that fact. That's the reason I just recently told some folks today, we're living in the last days. If you don't believe this executive mm -hmm. order is demonic, you don't understand the implication. Humans are a special creation of God, according to Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3. And Satan's always tried to destroy us. This is another level to destroy us, to move us away mm -hmm. from serving God and to serve the elites to serve Satan ultimately. And this is what I would say to all of our listeners. 
If this puts fear in you, you should move towards Christ. Some of you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. Some of us have been playing spiritual games. Draw near to God. That's Mm -hmm. what should happen. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. I have on the line from Las Vegas, Pastor Billy Crone. By the way, he pastors Sunrise Bible Church in Las Vegas. Learn more at getalifemedia.com, getalifemedia.com. I'm going to say something about the products of his that we carry here in a little bit. And Pastor Mark Henry pastors Revive Church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, and that is a northwest suburb of Minneapolis. And Mark and I are in studio because we're bringing Pastor Billy Crone to the Twin Cities on Thursday, October the 6th, 7 to 9 p.m., That's Revived Church, 7849 West Broadway Avenue, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And you folks who are living around the country and around the world, live stream it, markhenryministries.com. That's Central Time, 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time, October 6th, markhenryministries.com. Allow a couple of days for some editing. You can call us for a DVD. The cost is just $10. We don't charge any shipping in U.S. or Canada. Co-hosts will be Pastor Henry and myself. Again, live stream it, markhenryministries.com. We're going to be talking about a lot of topics that evening, including some of the issues that we're dealing with today. Pastor Billy Crone, let me go back to you, because I haven't quite left AI yet, artificial intelligence. And I'm playing a quick clip here because I want to talk about it, because even one of the pioneers here of artificial intelligence, Elon Musk, This is in one of your presentations, and I'll comment on those products later, Pastor Billy. But here, Elon Musk even says, we are summoning up demons. By that, he means if we aren't careful with artificial intelligence, we are literally calling forth the demons. This is why many tech titans, even many who are building AI systems, are scared to death of what they're actually trying to create. Here's Elon Musk. I would guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Um, So we need to be very careful with artificial intelligence. I'm increasingly inclined to think that there should be some uh, regulatory oversight uh, at the, maybe at the national and international level, uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't do something very foolish. Um, I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where there's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> then work out. <laughs> It'll be like summoning a demon, he says. Yet the big tech giants from Google to Facebook are all racing, trying to become the first ones to build such a thing. Here's AI developer Gordy Rose, whose company Kindred is trying to build one of these demons. And just listen to how freaked out he is, trying to explain to the audience what's going to happen when this AI system is fully functioning. Uh, this, is an, this is an attitude that some are having, this emerging alarmism about the way this is going to go. So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate. And going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what, what's going to be in the health care plan in the U.S. And underneath it all is this rising tsunami that, if we're not careful, is going to wipe us all out. Yeah, folks would rather talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle than the issues we're dealing with. Pastor Crone, your thoughts? Jan, that's the importance of AI. And I don't think this is hyperbole, but when you understand the technology of AI, the dangers of AI, and then the fact that these, not just tech moguls, but the tech moguls are working for the global elites, including Klaus Schwab, to use AI to bring in what they call, again, the Great Reset or the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And again, think about, I talk about the Internet of Things and the Internet of Bodies, what these transhumanists, these guys want to bring into the planet. Again, the Internet of Things, I'm going to be able to know where everybody's at, their proximity, microchips, what you buy and sell. You can't hire enough humans for that. Well, that's what they're going to use, and they're already implementing AI for. But the other half of the coin we've talked about, the IOB or Internet of Bodies, now you're going inside of people at the Mm -hmm. same time. You're going to know all their biometrics. You're going to know on the fly what's going on and or to give their bodies instructions, according to you, the entities. And you're even going to be able to, in real time, monitor their thoughts and memories and things of that nature. Well, again, 
as crazy as it sounds, we have that technology, but you can't hire enough humans for that. Aha, here comes the solution, AI. AI can run this whole global system that they call the Great Reset, that will be the Internet of Things and the Internet of Bodies, and it literally, Jen, will create a prison planet. And that's why the global elites have been working with big tech, including, believe it or not, Musk, even though he warns about it, he's still a big part of developing right. it. And also the others around that Facebook, Google, you played that clip earlier with Klaus Schwab with the brain chip reading your mind. He was interviewing Sergey Brin, who's one of the two co-founders of Google, who admitted back in the day the reason why they came into existence on tape, by the way, that it wasn't to develop another search engine. He said, we're here to develop AI. And these guys have been working for years with Klaus Schwab, the World Economic Forum. They actually have a school where they train leaders and they're transhumanists. And they've infected every country on the planet, and they're all working together for this big picture. And again, AI allows them to do it. And again, I'm convinced that's the Revelation 13 scenario of the Antichrist and the false prophet, where it says there that these two guys will be able to certainly monitor everybody's transactions. It says they're buy and sell with a marking system, and it's on a global basis. Well, that's the Internet of Things. But then it also talks about how they're able to give out an order instantaneously on the planet to anyone in any language. And then they will know whether people obey that order, mm -hmm. i.e. worship the Antichrist. And then they will be able to know where that entity is who did not do it, and they will kill them. And so again, this is the IOT, the IOB system. You could never in the history of mankind pull off Revelation 13 until the rise of artificial intelligence, which by the way is not coming, oh. it's already here. And this is why I've been saying for years, that just as Israel and their coming back as a nation in 1948 was a huge prophetic watershed moment because you can't have a seven-year tribulation until you got Israel back on the scene. Well, they're here. I'm telling you, Jan, the development of artificial intelligence is just as huge of a watershed moment because you can't have a Revelation 13 until you have something to be able to run and micromanage the planet and run the back-end system. Mm -hmm. That's what AI does. Mark Henry, we talk about strong delusion a lot. Some of what we're talking about right now, these people are strongly deluded. I'm sure you would agree with me. And they want to become as gods, little gods, people gods. Absolutely. As you look at that Revelation 13, as Billy just described to us, it's total slavery mm -hmm. of the world to the Antichrist in the worship of Satan. And so this whole AI development, this whole executive order, this is a intentional plan to mar people made in the image of God. Yes with the opportunity to glorify God and enjoy yes. him forever, instead of that, to be a slave ultimately of Satan. That's the bottom line of this. I'm going to transition in just a moment, but Pastor Crone, if you want to add another thought here to what we're talking about, go ahead, but then we're going to transition to one more topic. Real quick, Jen, I think it's important again for people to know they may have heard of Klaus Schwab, they may have heard of the Great Reset, they may have heard of the Fourth Industrial Revolution, but again, I keep stressing it's not just an economic reset. It's a human reset. Back to the goal of transhumanism. They literally want to change humanity into something, and this is their words, post-human. The latest term that they're using, it's in print, and it's called human 2.0. And they admit that when they're done with humanity, at least those who get to live, we will get to serve them, the elites. They're moving us back into a satanic feudal system, and whoever's left on the planet, this is their version of utopia, We'll get to live to serve them. But it isn't just in our normal bodies. And it sounds sick, but Jen, this is all in print, and they admit it. But they will genetically modify us into a better humanity, opposed to humanity, an upgraded human 2.0 who will exist with new genetic modifications to better serve them. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like utopia to me. Some of what you're talking about, you cover, and we carry the product, folks. I'm just going to reference some of the products of Pastor Billy Crone that we do carry. The most recent is the eight DVD teaching set beyond COVID, the global elites plan for human 2.0. Find that in my online store, olivetreeviews.org. Beyond COVID, the global elites plan for human 2.0. Talks about some of the very things we're talking about here, but we also have a very uplifting 18 teaching DVD set. Are you ready for the rapture? And then we have one of my favorites, 10 DVD set, Tribulation Rising, The Jewish People and the Antichrist. Again, in my online store or give my office a call, 
And then we carry one of Billy's books, UFOs, The Great Last Day's Deception. Will UFOs be the excuse that the left-behind world uses for the disappearance of millions, if not billions, of people after the rapture? Possibly. I think that we could easily make a good case for that. That's just $10, and that's free shipping in the U.S. and Canada. All interesting, folks. I want to promote your book, Mark Henry, because we featured it for an hour on air here a few months ago. Give us the title and a paragraph on it. Jan, we've written the book called The Man Code, 12 Essential Things Every Man Needs to Know. And you know, as people are walking through these days, the question is, what do we do? We don't want to just be filled with fear. No, we want to have the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. So we seek him. We read the scriptures. But the man code is specifically written in a code sort of fashion so that men can say, hey, this is what a real man looks like. He pursues biblical success. He uses the strength that God has given him to protect others, not harm others. He doesn't abandon his family. He loves his children. He raises his family. He loves God's team, the church. He loves the gospel. These are really essential things, both for men and, quite honestly, mm -hmm. Jan, for ladies as they think about husbands raising their daughters, who are they going to marry, etc. Yes, I think you've had as much feedback from women as from men, haven't you? Absolutely. Actually, if you think about it, Proverbs 31 was written for men to know what kind of right. wife to marry. This book was actually written originally, started me talking to my daughter, saying this is yes. the kind of man you need to marry. And so I just find the beautiful picture, the contrast of those two. So you can find The Man Code, again, that's in my online store, olivetreeviews.org. You can give my office a call or get on some of our newsletter lists because we promote them there as well. I'm just transitioning a little bit here, and off air, the three of us were discussing, we've had a significant event in the last month. Queen Elizabeth has gone on to glory, and what can we expect from her successor, King Charles III. I'm going to play a quick clip here. Now, let me clarify, I've played this before, but I think a lot of eschatology ministries are playing this because it's a very cryptic, mysterious clip of him, probably a year ago, and he's going to talk about a mystery man. Let's play this clip, and then I want to come back and ask my guests where they think King Charles III could be taking, well, perhaps even taking the world. As we tackle this crisis... Our efforts cannot be a series of independent initiatives running in parallel. The scale and scope of the threat we face call for a global systems level solution based on radically transforming our current fossil fuel based economy to one that is genuinely renewable and sustainable. So, ladies and gentlemen, my plea today is for countries to come together to create the environment that enables every sector of industry to take the action required. We know this will take trillions, not billions of dollars. We also know that countries, many of whom are burdened by growing levels of debt, simply cannot afford to go green. Here we need a vast military-style campaign to marshal the strength of the global private sector. With trillions at his disposal, far beyond global GDP, and with the greatest respect, beyond even the governments of the world's leaders, it offers the only real prospect of achieving fundamental economic transition. Pastor Billy Crone, again, this was about a year ago, and the three of us here were talking before we started the program about what do we expect from King Charles III? He's a globalist, he's an environmentalist. Again, the passion of the left is the green agenda. But I think the three of us are concerned that this guy is not going to be the most benevolent, I'll use the word dictator, I don't mean that in the worst sense by any means, but give me your thoughts, Billy Crone. You just trace the trail of what he's been up to behind the scenes when he was Prince Charles, and he's all part of the Great Reset crowd. He's a part of this transhumanist movement. He's also part of the depopulation agenda. Mm -hmm which again, I mentioned earlier, as crazy as it sounds, the transhumanist great reset vision is, yeah, we're gonna not only create the internet of things and the internet of bodies, and AI is gonna help us pull it off, but oh, by the way, about 90% of the population's got to go. That's right. And the rest of us, we get to be genetically modified to serve them. Well, Prince Charles is all part of that, quote, depopulation lie as well. But he's also a part of shocker, because what we're describing again, Jan, is again, the antichrist kingdom. One world government, one world economy, one world religion, mark of the beast, cashless society. 
But Prince Charles, for years, has been a part of a movement that he launched called Respect in order to, quote, promote tolerance among the world's religions. Again, it's like people are following a script. But here's the big thing. He's not prince anymore. He is the king. And this is, again, Jen, what people need to understand. This guy's not just all in with the Great Reset, the transhumanist thing, all the crazy things we're talking about. But now as king, he is in charge of a massive portion of the planet. See, it's not just England. People, oh, it's just England. That's just a small country that used to have a lot of world power back in the day. And no, right now, he is in charge of what's called the Commonwealth of England. The Commonwealth of England is an association of 56 independent countries, which is about 2.4 billion, not million, 2.4 billion people on the planet. So that gives one guy a massive amount of power to cram down the throats of a third of the population of the planet or more down their throats, this agenda. And that's the danger. And if you don't think he won't, he will. He's already said that he's a part of this, and that's what people need to wake up. He doesn't just have the charge of England. It's 2.4 right. billion people. Well, he's referring to somebody who's going to have trillions of dollars at his disposal, and I'm assuming the assumption here is to make the world perfect or at least to fine-tune the green agenda so we get off of fossil right. fuels. Did that strike you that way, Mark Henry? Oh, absolutely. I've listened to that clip numerous times. Yeah. I remember the first time I heard it, the first thing that jumped out to me, he talks about this he, who's the pronoun yeah. Yeah. that's going to control the world, marshal all of the private sector to accomplish this, have trillions of dollars, not billions, but trillions, he says. It's got to be a global agenda. In fact, he specifically says the nations have to come together. We can't run mm -hmm. and make independent decisions and run parallel. No, no, no. We've got to become one. I think he's actually liked the job. Mm -hmm. Just listening to him talk in the past and in the present. And I know that him and others in his association have tried to walk away from yeah. that statement, yeah. but it was very revealing. Very revealing. I think my observation, and I'd like to throw that in here just as a afterthought here in our conversation is, we're talking about some global leaders. Maybe I should say we're talking about a lack of global leaders. And our year here is winding down, 2022. I mean, we've got a few months left. But I think the thing that stood out to me in this current year is the lack of a global leader. We certainly don't have a global leader in the White House. Now, is King Charles going to step up and become that global leader? Again, we don't know. Is he going to be an apocalyptic player? We don't know. One of you gentlemen were slightly suspicious of that. I think that was you, Mark. Yeah, he's definitely set himself up. You know, I think you look back at Queen Elizabeth, she was someone who suppressed this quietly in the mm -hmm. backgrounds, but he's all in. He's yeah. all in for the reset, the depopulation, the unification of religion. In fact, even in that clip, you'll notice he mentioned again climate change. We've got to do this for climate change. We all got to come together. We've all got to have this marshalling of the private sector. We've got to have all of these things. Why? For climate change. And so that really is the mantra worshiping the creation rather than the creator that I think it brings it about. But again, Billy Crone, who would we point to as we speak? Who would we point to as a global leader? Again, I'm not trying to be political in saying if we elect a Republican president, he will automatically become the global leader. He might, but I don't know that. But as we yeah. speak, there's no one that we can point to. You're right, Jen. And part of it is, I think, scripturally as Christians, we can take our shots at, and guesses at the Antichrist and who, by all estimates, probably is very well and alive on planet Earth. But technically, as Christians, we won't know who it is, and because we are the ones who's restraining his appearance, Second Thessalonians 2. So we don't look for the Antichrist. We look for Jesus Christ, so to speak. But the moment that we're out of here, that's when he raises his ugly head. But what we do know is the Scripture is clear, that there's going to be 10 kings, some people say 10 economic kings ruling over economic aspects of the planet, and it says there, and this is what, go back to King Charles now, statement. It says there that there's 10 kings basically ruling the planet, and then it says they give their power over to the Antichrist, Revelation 17. And that's literally what King Charles is saying, that it's Revelation 17. It's so freaky that he's going to be one of these 10 kings on the planet. And again, he rules over 2.4 billion people, so that certainly would fit. And then if all these, quote, kings on the planet— are going to be ruling the planet with this great reset, which is what they're building, at some point, the Bible says they're going to give their power over to one guy. And that's exactly, again, what he just said. Now, whether he's that guy or whatever, the point is, he's speaking Revelation 17. Yeah. We're all of us elites are going to rule the planet, and we're going to give this guy everything he needs 
to single-handedly control the world. If you just join me, again, I'm talking on the line here with Pastor Billy Crone. He pastors Sunrise Bible Church in Las Vegas. Learn more at getalifemedia.com, getalifemedia.com. We carry lots of his products. Actually, Pastor Crone was with us a year ago as well. And in studio is Pastor Mark Henry, and the best way to reach you is revivebrooklynpark.org. Is that right? That, or you can Google MarkHenryMinistries.com. Either way, you'll be able to find us. Revivebrooklynpark.org or MarkHenryMinistries.com. And we're bringing Billy in for the evening of Thursday, October 6th, 7 to 9 Central Time. There's no cost if you're in the Twin Cities and you'd like to attend 7849 West Broadway Avenue, Brooklyn Park. Uh, northwest suburb of Minneapolis, no cost, no registration, or enjoy it on your computer, live stream, markhenryministries.com, Thursday, October the 6th, 7 to 9 p.m. We'll have a DVD of it a few days later. It'll be posted to our website, olivetreeviews.org. No cost to watch it. Go to video. Be posted to markhenryministries.com. Those are the various ways you can tap into it. Pastor Mark and I are the co-hosts for the evening. No cost, no reservations needed. Live stream, MarkHenryMinistries.com. Gentlemen, let me just make a comment, then we're going to transition into something else here while we have time. And that is the reference in Luke 21, it talks there about nations having distress with perplexity. And we understand Luke 21 is really a direct reference to the tribulation. Nonetheless, the tribulation is casting a shadow on the church age today. And I'm just watching right now in the last year, again, I'm reflecting a little bit on 2022. The scope of natural disasters has been staggering, just staggering as we speak, they're going on. And again, they result in nations having distress with perplexity, but we've got the political angle causing distress with perplexity. We've got food shortages causing distress. As we speak, Vladimir Putin is threatening and is probably carrying out some heinous acts that are unthinkable to the poor people of Ukraine. In my lifetime, I don't remember a time of such distress with perplexity of nations. Your thoughts, Mark? Jan, everywhere you look, the world is groaning and groping. And the critics of Christianity and the Bible, God would never allow these things. I just want you to know that God does judge nations in real Mm -hmm. time. And one of the things we learn throughout the Bible is he raises up nations to judge other nations. And this is a hard concept for people to wrap their minds around until you read the Old Testament and you realize that there's a holy God in heaven who's created everything and everything's created for his glory and honor and praise. And when nations do not give him the honor that's rightly due, he holds them accountable. And so you read through the Old Testament, there were nations who were destroyed with floods, there were nations who were destroyed by their armies. And so people need to repent. They need to return to God. Now is the time to do that. Wherever you're at, look to the Lord. Why don't we give the times of the services of your churches, Pastor Crone, the times of your church service, Sunrise Bible Church would be? Sunday mornings at 9 and 1045 a.m. and Wednesday evenings, 630 p.m. Pastor Henry, you've got 9, 10, and 11 a.m.? Yeah, those three services in the morning, all of them are different as far as music, but we're always in the same text together, growing in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus. And Jan, if I might just mention, those of you who are going to join us on the stream for October 6th with Billy Crone and the two of us, if you download the Mark Henry mm-hmm. app, you can watch it right on your television. By the way, your 9 a.m. service is all traditional. Folks, if that's what you're looking for, you won't find a more beautiful service than 9 a.m. at Revive in Brooklyn Park. And you're part of the Evangelical Free Church. I think we should clarify that. Yeah. Gentlemen, I'm going to transition here just a little bit, and we're going to go in kind of an unusual direction. And I'm doing this because Pastor Crone, Billy, has had a background both in the New Age and the occult. Something has come along here in the last month or so, which needs to be talked about and particularly needs to be talked about by someone who understands the mindset of those that are trying to sway our children and teens into the world of darkness. And that would be this new Fox Disney presentation. I think it's called The Little Demon. I'm going to play a clip, and it's about five minutes, so please bear with me. But it sums up what this is all about better than I can possibly do it. It's Billy Hollowell and Pastor Mike Signorelli, and they're describing what this presentation is all about, the impact it's going to have, particularly on young people, which is the intention, is to lure them into the world of the darkness And then, Billy Crone, I want your take on it, because you came out of that world, so you understand it better than most. 
So let's get right into this show, Little Demon. This is a show that's airing on FXX, a network owned by Disney. What was your reaction when you saw what this show was? They are trying to desensitize us and our kids to the demonic. It's that simple. We've seen that over and over and over again, but a show comes out and the attempt is to make something that biblically is not normal, normal, trying to accept something that God clearly opposes. It's and it's disgusting. You know, I'm seeing some reactions from people, even some people in the church saying, oh, don't fall for the trap. Don't speak out on this. Let it go. They're just trying to market off of Christians, you know, the way that we're reacting to it. How do you respond to those people who would give those critiques? Because it does seem to almost diminish the, the reaction to it. Yeah, well, listen, they have a billion dollar industry behind them. And it's very difficult if every single one of us got loud about it to be louder than that voice. But, you know, go back to the motives. I would challenge anybody. The lead actress, Aubrey Plaza, she literally said this in an interview about this show. I love that we are normalizing paganism. This is verbatim what she said. Laura is a pagan. She's a witch. She's jacked. She's got to protect her daughter against demons. And she's just got to get her house in order. And so the motive is revealed by the actresses uh, in interviews. It's very clear that they have they have an agenda. Yeah, and Laura, for those who don't know, is the mother in this show. And just for background, so people understand, because for a lot of people, this might be new. They don't know what Little Demon is, um, and you know, great for them. Unfortunately, we know what it is, and we have to talk about it. Uh, but but Laura is the mother who who mated with Satan and had the Antichrist. That is what this cartoon is about. So you have some background on sort of what this is. But let me ask you this, because you are on the front lines of dealing with these spiritual issues. When you see a show like this that is out in the mainstream and being promoted, what does that tell you about the state of our culture? Well, I think there's a war spiritually going on. The book of Ephesians talks about it, and our kids will be the casualties. There's a fight over a generation. You know, this show is through Disney, through FX, uh, but, and it's, and they're going to tell you it's an adult show, but we all know that children want to watch the things that they shouldn't watch. And so it's a cartoon, it's in a format kids love, and the main character is in middle school. And so it's highly relatable to kids that are in an age where they're making decisions about their identity. And we have to uncover what I believe are the works of the enemy as strategies to, to literally condition our children. Yeah, it's interesting because there's two elements to this. And you and I were talking about this the other day, but I think it's important we sort of drive this home. You have one camp that might look at this and say, oh, look, they're, they're putting out these paganistic themes, these Satanist themes in this cartoon, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's an 18 year old watching it, a 30 year old, it obviously matters if it's a kid and we know kids are going to want to be attracted to this, but you have that camp, right? And then you have sort of the other camp that, that just wants to laugh it off. Well, they made a cartoon about this silly stuff that isn't even real. So it seems like there's almost two simultaneous dangers here. We're elevating this stuff while at the same time, almost mocking it, making a cartoon of it as though it's not real. I don't know if you want to speak to those two dynamics, but they, they both seem problematic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can watch the trailer for this show. And at one particular point, there's a line where one of the characters says, if my parents ever show up to a party, murder me. And you, you've got these things where whether whatever spectrum you're on, whether you think this is real or you think that the spiritual reality is fake, I think we can all universally agree that murder is wrong. And so this, this cartoon format is filled with uh, scenes and images that really are, are atrocious. And so it's getting to the point where um, you can say it's humor, but what are the effects of the humor? What are the effects of desensitizing people and normalizing these images, the, the murderous images that were in this show, just even in the trailer? And so here's the thing. First, it starts out like a joke, but then when you have to deal with the repercussions of feeding this content to the masses, it's not that funny anymore. Well, and, and last question for you, because you deal with spiritual warfare, you deal with these things as a pastor, as a revivalist, the things that you do, what is going on in culture more broadly? It seems like we're seeing more of this occultic content, not just in cartoon form, we're actually seeing Ouija boards and things like that 
out in the mainstream more than I have in my entire life. What are you seeing on that front? Yeah, I mean, to anyone watching, we are not fighting atheism. We are actually fighting the new age and counterfeit spirituality. And I'll just tell you, the Bible says Satan comes as an angel of light. And so he's not going to come as, as a complete and total opposite because we would all discern that. We would say, oh, it's the devil, but actually it comes in the form of humor and, oh, we're just making fun of it. Or it comes in the form of Ouija boards and, you know, uh, burning sage and these counterfeit spiritual practices. And but here's the thing again the motive is so plain to see once you open your eyes to it you can't unsee it when you go to the local bookstore or even the grocery store nowadays here in the united states they have books about palm reading and tarot cards but they're all within eye level of your children and to go a step further they even have books tarot cards for kids and these are normal things now these this is not just some fringe item that you find in like that one store in the mall this is at national chains and again i would challenge anybody to see for yourself it's becoming more and more uh, popular for people to say well i want to be spiritual but i don't want to be a religious christian and what they've lost in the midst of that is christ I just want to make a comment or two, then I want some feedback from my guests here. But I think the thing that jumped out at me is the lead actress saying, I love that we are normalizing paganism. That's been going on big time here for the last seven, eight years. Some of you remember back in 2016, the satanic ceremony at the Gotthard based tunnel in Switzerland, an eight hour ceremony with Baphomet dancing around like the demon that he was. And then we had, just back in July, the Commonwealth Games. King Charles was there as Prince Charles, of course, in which they celebrated Baal, or Baal, and then a woman rode the beast. And we actually showed a video of this at our last Understanding the Times meeting with Michelle Bachman. And I write about it, by the way, in our print magazine for fall, which you can sign up for. And Mark, you very recently in the pulpit, and I have your handout in front of me, you referred to... Don't play games with the devil. And then you talked about the things to stay away from. You list Ouija boards and tarot cards and yoga. We've got Christian yoga. Oh, that's a whole program in itself. So you're very tuned in to the fact that we are moving to the dark side. Your thought? Absolutely we are, Jan, and I was reluctant to show Little Demon and trailer. And you showed the trailer in the church service. We did, and yes. we sanctified it a bit. Yeah. But literally, as I watched that, almost every single scene, I tried to watch it frame by frame. It's filled with demonic symbolism and enticing movements all the way through it. Sexually, morally, there's one point where the girl's going to be offered as a human sacrifice. This is not a game. Even as I was preparing that sermon Sunday, because Saul, the king mm -hmm. of Israel, he ends up rebelling against God. As a result, God leaves him, an evil spirit comes, and through the rest of his life, he's moving closer and closer to the occult. You get to chapter 28 of 1 Samuel, and he goes to the witch of Endora. You need to stop playing games with God was the point, as you mentioned. But as people start to play games, there is an enticement to the occult like nothing else. In fact, even as I was preparing that sermon, I was looking for different slides to use and different pictures. Jan, even in my own spirit, there's just this evil enticement. And so the commandments of scripture, and I just want to rattle them off for people. People need to get this and hold on to it. Paul was concerned, according to the scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, I am afraid, and as a pastor, I am afraid for our listeners. I'm afraid for all of you who are listening right now. Lest as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your mind should be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. So, Jan, if I may, let me rattle off just five quick statements that are warning us in the New Testament. These are all commands in the New Testament to us in the church age. Give no opportunity for the devil, Ephesians chapter 4. Submit to God, resist the devil in James 4. Stand strong in the Lord, Ephesians 6. And that's not nebulous. Right in the text, he tells us how to do it with six things. Truth, righteousness, faith, the word of God, the gospel, and peace. And then, fourthly, destroy every speculation that raises up itself against God in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. And then, lastly, do not be taken captive by the philosophies of men that are rooted in the ideologies, the principles of this world, Colossians chapter 2. And those are serious warnings for us today. MarkHenryMinistries.com, MarkHenryMinistries.com, if you'd like to interact with Pastor Mark here. Pastor Crone, we're down to a few minutes here, but you came out of this lifestyle. You were drenched in it. Help us understand, first of all, what we just heard and the abomination that this is targeting children and teens, of course, 
your thoughts as one who is steeped in this? Again, as the scripture warns, as Pastor Mark shared, this is something you don't even mess with. Been there, done that. Wish I wouldn't have bought the T-shirt. But when I was in my teens, my first prayer was not to God. Unfortunately, it was to Satan. And I said, you can have this life. And I said, I just want significance and power. And within three months of that, I tried to kill myself three different times. Twice I tried to OD. That didn't work. So I shot myself in the chest with a 22 rifle. But that shows you his character. He makes all these promises, the counterfeit from God. And yet John chapter 8, Jesus tells us Satan is a liar and he's a father of all lies and he's a murderer and he's been one from the beginning. And he is alive and well on planet Earth. And he's the one who is motivating these global elites that we've been talking about, the Great Reset crowd, these transhumanists with a lie, the same lie he used in Genesis 3 to get Adam and Eve. He's doing it today, spinning it with modern technology. But it's the same lie that you can become God. You don't need Jesus Christ. Listen to Satan. He's got a better way. And then as far as these cartoons and things, everybody's talking about Disney grooming kids and other people grooming kids for sexual exploitation and things of that nature. And that is true, unfortunately, going on. But really, speaking of Disney, a lot of these entities are also grooming people for the occult, and they're using that with the young minds. And this latest one, the little demon, Jan, this has been going on for years. We've got a 20-part study on witchcraft that we went through, a 16-part study on Satanism that we went through for more information. But there's a cartoon that was out years ago. It was called Mr. Pickles, and it ran for several years. Mr. Pickles was a flat-out sick evil. Do you think Little Demon's bad? It is. Mr. Pickles was straight up satanic, showing kids how to do sacrifices and things of that nature, all presented as a cartoon. And again, Mark, as you mentioned, the stat is about 95% of young adults have zero supervision in what they watch on the media. And even if it appears on a so-called adult cartoon, you know the kids are watching it. But go back to Disney. This isn't the first shot across the bow. Disney is right. grooming kids also for the occult. They've been doing that for years. And again, Disney came out with one. Check this one out. This is just as bad. It's called the Owl House. Owl is in the bird, the Owl House. And that one is full on teaching kids straight up about witchcraft. If you don't have a good home life and you're feeling lonely, hey, join us, the rest of us. You'll have a new family in the occult. It's what it's all about. Now, where all this is headed is it's not by chance. God told us this is the kind of sorcery, witchcraft, satanic society you would have on the planet in the seven-year tribulation. Mm -hmm. And we see that in Revelation 9, where it said that these people, they refuse to turn to God in the seven-year tribulation, and it says there they would not repent of the work of their hands. Listen, they would not stop worshiping demons, and then even goes on, they also wouldn't repent of their murders or their magic arts or sexual immorality or their thefts. What we're basically seeing, Jan, is with these entities, including, believe it or not, cartoons, we're seeing the grooming of the satanic society that will be in the seven-year tribulation. Very well put, Pastor Crone. Give us about 30 seconds, please, how you got out of it. How I got out of it was Jesus Christ. That's the only way out of this mess. Whether it's the lie of Satanism, the occult, witchcraft, New Age, all the things I was involved in, or dare I say, the lie of transhumanism or the Great Reset. Jan, I just, in bare bones faith, out of demonic terror, how I got saved, I ran to my bedroom. I simply dropped on my knees and I said, God, if you want this life, you can have it. But I knew I needed to specifically call upon the name of Jesus Christ from two people who witnessed to me. I was mean and nasty to them. And I said, Jesus Christ, would you please forgive me and come to this life? And bang, instantly, I believed that I was demon possessed. They left immediately. Man, I was light as a feather. And I was laughing and crying at the same time because I couldn't believe that the one who I blasphemed the most would still love me enough to chase me down. Folks, that's the good news of the gospel. No matter what you've done, no matter where you're at, even if you're involved in the occult like I was, even if you blaspheme Christ like I used to be, he is still willing to forgive you. He's only one prayer away if you would just Amen. call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Folks, come on out on Thursday, October the 6th, 7 p.m. Central, or live stream at MarkHenryMinistries.com or the Mark Henry Ministries app. We're going to talk about a little bit of an extension of some of the issues today, but we'll broaden it and bring in some other topics as well. Pastor Mark Henry and I will be the co-host. If you'd like to come out in person, Revive Church, 7849 West Broadway Avenue, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. No cost, no registration, just come on out. We have a full house, and we'll live stream it to how many countries, Mark? Our last event 
I think we're over 260,000 views yes, that we're we, able to we analyze there in about 76 different countries. Wonderful. Well, making the bee system work for us. That's what we need to do while we have time. Gentlemen, thank you for giving up time today. And we hit on four or five topics here that I think were very essential and appreciate it so much. And looking forward to October the 6th. Let me just go out of the program here saying, because I want us to focus on overcoming the world because that's why Jesus came. And no matter what's going on in the world, no matter what evil ensues, we are told that we can have peace and calm only in his presence. No matter who sits in government, we can have assurance in knowing God sits on the throne. No matter how dim things seem to be or how dark things get in the world, we can know with certainty in our hearts that the sun, S-O-N, still shines. In John 16, 33, Jesus states these wonderful words. I've told you these things so that you may have peace in this world. You will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So I want to thank you for listening, folks, and we will talk to you again next week.